Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video, uh, I'm going to be doing a bit of a, a different thing with it. I'm actually going to be um, creating my own special function, as you can see right here, uh, defined by the summation, and we're going to create some identities for it, as you can see. Uh, we're going to create an integral definition for it, and we're just going to overall have a lot of fun with this function until at the end we're going to derive uh, a more closed form for it. So let's go ahead and get started. So this function, we're going to call it f of x, but I'm also going to call it di gamma bar of x. And the reason I'm, I'm doing that is because um, it's very, very closely related to the di gamma function, and its identities really match up with the di gamma function. So it's the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over n plus x, right? And we can say that this is kind of similar to how di gamma of x equal to negative gamma, of course we don't have this, plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus x. So we have some similarities here in the 1 over n plus x, and we're going to see that it's also going to line up in a few different ways. So first thing, let's go ahead and define a few different values of it. So let's go ahead and plug in. Obviously, uh, it's just going to be undefined at 0 since we're going to have a 0 over, or a uh, 1 over 0 situation, so I'll just write undefined. Um, but di gamma bar of 1 is going to be sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over n, which is just equal to ln 2. A pretty famous sum. And as we continue on, we're going to see that um, we're going to get some pretty similar summations with L and 2, it might be positive and negative, and then we're going to get some alternating harmonic series added onto that. So let's go ahead and first try and figure out um, the relationship between f of x and f of x plus 1. So let's just go ahead and write that out. So we're going to have di gamma bar of x. This is going to be equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus x. Di gamma bar of x plus 1 is going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus 1 plus x, right? So a way that we can try to quote unquote fix this up a little bit is um, we can try and plug in n plus 1 for n, and that's going to make the denominators the same on both of these. So I'm going to go ahead and shift this over. So I'm going to replace everywhere I see n with n plus one, n minus 1. So n minus 1 equals 0. This is just going to become n. This is going to be n minus 1, right? So this means we're really summing from n equals 1 up to infinity. And this n minus 1, this can just become a negative sign out here. So now we have a pretty similar summation. We can see that they're just subtracting from one another. So if we go ahead and add them together, di gamma bar of x plus di gamma bar of x plus 1, we're going to have these sums subtract each other. As you can see, they're completely the same in every way. They just have that negative sign, and this one starts at 1 instead of 0. So everything in there is going to just perfectly cancel with, with each other, except that n equals 0 term. So if we go ahead and plug in that n equals 0 term, we're going to find that it's just 1 over x. And this is pretty similar to our di gamma recurrence relationship, which says that di gamma of x, or di gamma of x plus 1, minus di gamma of x, equals 1 over x. So again, we see this sort of relationship right here that lines up pretty well. So let's go ahead and figure out some more analogs to the di gamma function. So we know that uh, di gamma of 1 minus z, or I guess I'll use x because I've been using x so far, di gamma 1 minus x minus di gamma of x is equal to pi cot pi x. That's called the reflection formula for the di gamma function. But what if we wanted to create the same formula for, or a similar formula for our new function di gamma bar of x? Well, first, let's start by calculating uh, di gamma bar of x, which, again, we're just going to put this summation in there, and di gamma bar of 1 minus x. So one thing that we want to notice here is that in this side, we're having x be positive, and this side, x is going to be negative, and then we've kind of shifted it over by 1 as well. So one thing that we can do here 
is we can kind of notice with the digamma function, this pi caught pi x arises because if you take, you reflect the digamma function and you add it, or I guess you're subtracting it, you're subtracting the digamma function and you combine those two, and you've reflected them over, you've kind of covered with your sum, sum from n equals zero to infinity of one over n plus x. Once you've reflected it over, you've kind of covered all the integers. And so uh, I'm not gonna go through the whole proof right now, but you'll kind of see that it'll end up equaling the sum from negative infinity to infinity of one over n plus x, I think, something like that. And since the sum from negative infinity to infinity of one over k pi plus x equals cotangent of x, it actually lines up very nicely. So we wanna do the same thing. The only problem is we have this negative one to the n. One way we can actually deal with that though is we have a similar summation, the sum from negative infinity to infinity of one over k pi plus x times negative one to the n, it's actually equal to cosecant of x. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. In this summation, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make it positive rather than negative. So we're gonna instead, since we can't really change the sign of x, we're gonna change the sign of n. So we're gonna map n over to negative n. So that means instead of summing from zero to infinity, we're gonna be summing from negative infinity to zero. And then negative one to the negative n is actually just the same as negative one to the n, since negative one to the negative one is just negative one again. So we can just leave that as it was. So we're just gonna have negative one to the n. On the bottom, we're gonna have one minus x minus n. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift the index again. So we're gonna sum instead from negative infinity to negative one. And now what we've kind of done is uh, since, since all the values of n are one less, we now have to uh, replace everything with n plus one. So we're gonna get negative one to the n plus one over one minus x minus n plus one. These ones are gonna cancel, so we're just gonna get minus n. And we can bring this negative sign out. And that's actually gonna cancel with this negative sign right here. So we just have the sum from negative infinity to negative one of negative one to the n over n plus x. And if we go ahead and combine that with this, as you can see, they have um, the same sign now because we canceled those negative signs, we can add them together. So we're gonna get digamma bar of x plus digamma bar of one minus x. This is gonna be equal to sum from negative infinity to infinity of negative one to the n over n plus x, which is equal to pi times the sum from negative infinity to infinity negative one to the n over n pi plus pi x, which is pi cosecant of pi x. So that's our reflection formula right here. Again, very, very similar to the digamma function, but instead of, instead of having the cotangent and the negative sign, we have the cosecant. Something pretty interesting that I think I wanna note here is that this is also um, this digamma bar of x plus digamma bar of one minus x is also equal to um, gamma of x times gamma of one minus x, which I think is pretty interesting. You know, just the, because of the way the identities work out, the reflection formula for the, di, for the digamma bar function and for the gamma function actually have the same result. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, so next, let's go ahead and derive an integral representation. So that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. But the basic way that we're gonna to wanna to go about this is we're gonna to wanna to try and remove all the x's, as many x's as we can from our summation. So we have this n plus x, one over n plus x, and that's nasty to deal with because it can't be easily summed up, right? So instead of having that n plus x in the bottom, we can write it as an integral. Now, the integral from zero to one of t to the b dt is just one over b plus one, as long as b is greater than negative one. So instead of having one over b plus one, we want one over n plus x. So we can rewrite this as the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n 
times the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n plus x minus 1 dt. All right, that's pretty simple. Now all we have to do is sort of rearrange this. So first thing is we have, uh, we're going to bring the integral outside. So integral from 0 to 1 of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n t to the n plus x minus 1 dt. All right. Now, this t to the x minus 1 right here actually has nothing to do with n, so we can bring it outside. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the x minus 1 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative, well, actually, since we have negative 1 to the n, t to the n, we can just write this as negative t to the n dt. And using our geometric series, this is going to become the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the x minus 1 over t plus 1. And that's our integral representation for our uh, special function that we've created. And this is actually pretty similar to an uh, integral representation of the digamma function, um, which is digamma of x equals integral, or um, digamma of x plus gamma equals the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x to the z uh, x minus 1, or I guess I shouldn't be using x, huh? Uh, 1 minus t to the x minus 1, I believe it's t to the x minus 1, 1 minus t dt. This is pretty similar, we just have a, a differing signs, and because we don't have that other part of the summation, like the digamma function, that's why that 1 is in here. All right. So now that we've created a few identities for our pretty cool function, let's go ahead and um, actually evaluate it and get it into uh, terms of the digamma function. So let's go ahead and do that. So in a previous video, actually a long time ago, you can go check out my infinite series playlist and I believe it should be the first video there. I uh, use an identity, which was the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n over a plus bn, and this is actually pretty similar to our um, to our function, and I've shown that that was equal to negative 1 over 2b, di gamma of a over 2b, plus 1 over 2b, di gamma of a plus b over 2b. So if we go ahead and apply this to our uh, special function, we can go ahead and say a equals x, b equals 1. We're going to find that our digamma bar of x is going to equal negative 1 half digamma of x over 2 plus 1 half digamma of x plus 1 over 2. So pretty interesting function right here. Um, and if you kind of think about this function, uh, when you would have, first off, uh, since we're subtracting digamma functions, those uh, harmonic series inside the digamma function would disappear. Also, the, um, get the negative gamma at the front would also disappear. And we'd have uh, x, o x over 2 on the bottom, which would become 2n plus x. And then we'd have 2n plus 1 plus x in the other one. And so we kind of alternate terms, which is exactly what we're doing in our normal function. So this is an exact uh, representation of our function. Uh, so really, there's no re need to have this special function since it's not exactly anything new and it's expressible in terms of other functions. But I just thought it was uh, a pretty interesting function to play around with and show that it has a lot of cool identities as well. However, one thing I'd like to challenge all you to do is to take this uh, definition of the function and prove all the identities that we showed recently without uh, just going straight through the, uh, without just converting it back into the series. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention before is that a pretty interesting case of our sum is uh, digamma bar of one half is the sum from n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n over n plus one half, which is actually equal to pi over 2, which I think is a pretty interesting, a pretty interesting summation, a pretty interesting value coming from this function. Uh, so yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I had a lot of fun playing around with this function. If you guys would like to see more content like this, just let me know. Or if you want to see it going in another direction, I absolutely appreciate any feedback. 
And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time.